Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, today is National Soccer Day. Let's begin by defining what soccer is. Well, you know that in the UK we have football. And just to make it clear, that's not the same as American football. So you have football in Britain and American football in America. So to avoid confusion, Americans, they call British football soccer. So all across the world and in the UK as well, British football is often referred to as soccer so that it's not confused with American football. If you put into Google the word football, you're probably going to get lots of stuff about American football. I just tried that with Bing. Now, Bing is an American search engine anyway, but it was like Britain didn't exist. It just showed me all of these men wearing helmets with large shoulders, which is some kind of American football. We often think of football as being something which involves overpaid players, street violence, fans going absolutely crazy, and commentators who lose all sense of good presentation when they're presenting. They just seem to get louder and louder and louder and the ball is approaching the goal and they talk faster, which drives language learners absolutely insane. I never really liked football. So when I saw National Soccer Day, I thought, "Mm, what am I going to say about this? Because it's really not my kind of thing. But what I can tell you is that Across the English-speaking world, we do actually have some other sports which you might be surprised to learn are not quite all about money. For example, Ireland has hurling. Hurling is a sport that looks a little bit like hockey, but in another way looks a little bit like rugby. It's fiercely protected. The Irish love it. And so do Irish people around the world. But the difference with hurling is that there's no big money. Nobody gets paid. And even the rules on sponsorship are very strictly controlled when it's allowed. So if you want something that's a bit more free from capitalism, hurling is definitely for you. There's also Shinti, Gaelic football from our indigenous areas of the UK. You might be surprised. About soccer, our national sport, you know, football, there's also a real force of good in there, which is often overlooked. Marcus Rashford, for example, he's been very involved in trying to eliminate child poverty. And there's other people as well from the football spectrum. The captain of Liverpool, I don't remember his name, he set up a fund during COVID which players could donate to. And if you're really into ethical football, there's a website called common-goal.org. That's common-goal.org, which is all about uniting the football community for good. It says on their website, with more than 3 billion fans, football is the largest social phenomenon on the planet. It's the world's most popular sport, is one of the few cultural forces strong enough to shift society. And that's very true. Those are very good words. 
for those of you who are living in Europe and America as well, maybe even Latin America, we had a TV show in the 1980s. It was called Sport Billy. It was animated and was all about this young sportsman called Billy. He kept a little bag of sports tools that magically he could make bigger or smaller. And he came from another planet. And in fact, I remember the opening theme tune, which was kind of rock, you know, sport Billy, a hero from another planet. And his idea was to teach kids all about ethics and fair sportsmanship. FIFA adopted Sport Billy as their mascot at one point, even though there were only 26 episodes of Sport Billy ever made. He came from the planet Olympus, which was a twin of the Earth on the opposite side of the Sun, and it was populated by big, athletic, godlike people. The king there was King Sporticus and his wife, Queen Pandusa. Sport Billy had a little spaceship. It looked like an alarm clock. It even had a bell on the top and a clock face, I think, on the front. And he traveled around with a girl called Lily and a talking dog called uh, Willy. It was an amazing TV show and he came to Earth many times to help teach kids about the ethics of fair sports. I don't think he would be very popular now because his episodes were a little bit politically incorrect. Episodes like Trouble in Tokyo, The Mexican Holiday, mm. Uh, Arabian Nights and Days, The Mystery of the Russian Cave, Peril, which means danger, in Peru. So <laughs> he doesn't have a very positive uh, title for each of these places that he visits. But uh, I loved Sport Billy, even though I hated football. Uh, so he, he was very popular all across the English-speaking world. So if you're looking for a nice cartoon from the 80s, go on to YouTube. I'm sure you'll find him there. Uh, I'm sure he's still around. And don't forget to check out some of the more indigenous sports all across the English-speaking world. Hurling is definitely my favorite, and it's just as popular as football in some parts of the English world. Thankfully, football is beginning to calm down a little bit. During the last decade, it's been known for being a frenzy of violence, misogyny, and associations with other things like sectarianism, segregation, and tribalism. That's not new. George Orwell once said that he hoped competitive sport would disappear from schools because he said it just taught children to hate each other and prepared them for fighting in war. I'm not sure if it'll ever disappear completely, but now that we have a rise in women's football teams, men's sports are no longer, or at least should no longer be considered only a man thing. The more finer ideas of sports are coming up, and hopefully that'll help to temper it a little bit. When we talk about tempering something, we mean calming it down. We often temper animals. That just means we work with them so that they can control their temper. 
Tempering has a number of meanings in English, but one of them is to act as a neutralizing or counterbalancing force. So, for example, if you have a wild horse, I know that in America, because I've seen it in the movies, they take the horse and they put it in water, they ride it in water to try to uh, control it a little bit more and to teach it uh, how to behave. It's very interesting. Yeah, I saw that in an episode of Bonanza once. Do you remember Bonanza? Anyway, tempering can have other meanings as well. So it's important to keep that in mind. So we can say that football right now, that idea that it's a purely masculine, brutal force, um, is being tempered with feminism as more and more women come in to play football. It's very interesting, very interesting. Anyway, if you are intending to celebrate National Soccer Day, remember that football can be used as a great force for good. And I hope that you investigate uh, those, um, those forces that I mentioned earlier. Uh, rather than think of it as a money-making sport. That's it from me. See you all soon. Bye.